All right, so we're going to be starting our last day of studying Illustrator, and then we're going to be moving on to nonfiction text. So our objective today is readers understand that illustrators reflect the author's feelings or attitude, tone, toward the subject of the text. So we've talked about tone a little bit when we were studying the writer's craft. Well, illustrators, obviously, they when they are drawing or writing or you know creating art for a particular author, they want their art to reflect what the author is writing. They don't want necessarily to write some or draw something that's way off from what they intended. So that also includes tone as well. So how an author is writing can be affected in different ways. We talked about how authors, when they write, they can write in certain types of moods. They can have um, certain opinions and views and create themes and all of that. And so an illustrator's job is to really match their drawings with whatever it is that the writer is doing. So we're going to be looking at tone today. And illustrators think very carefully about their artistic choices and how they reflect the tone of a book. Tone is the author's feelings or attitude toward a subject or audience. And we've covered tone a little bit already. So we're going to see if you guys can remember a little bit about that as we go along. So think about the author's attitude or feeling in this illustration. So this is Destiny's Gift pages 11 through 12. So just kind of looking at these pages here, what do you think the author's attitude or feelings are in uh, this illustration? What do you think, Wesley? Uh, generosity, love. Um, okay, so maybe generosity, maybe she, she is giving her something. That's always a possibility, right? What else? Remember, it says the author's attitude or feelings toward a subject or audience, toward a certain topic or person. Uh, Amelia? I noticed how the colors are sort of bright and cheery, and so I'm thinking he likes, like Wesley said, the feeling of generosity and of kindness. Okay, so maybe the author has is trying to show kindness in this uh, illustration here and in this part of the book. That's a possibility. Any other thoughts before we move on to Barco? This is not, well, I don't know if this is kind of implied, but gentleness? Yeah, it could be gentleness, possibly, that's shown through this illustration as well. Okay, what about here? This is also from the same book. This is page 15. We have another illustration. So what do we think is going on here? And what's the attitude or feeling in this illustration that the author wants us to see? London? Okay, so happiness and love. Zoe? Yep, it kind of looks that way, that maybe she's being, she's sad and she's being consoled uh, by these two other people. Lila? Okay, yep, that could be possibly it. Marco? Joy. Maybe. I Maybe. Need, I need context to sort of figure it out. In some ways, yeah. You could obviously get context, but we're just focusing on illustration. That's really all we're focused on in today's lesson. Uh, Wesley? Gentleness, kindness, and um, uh, what's the other thing where the, um, uh, joy? Uh, yeah, joy. Okay. What about, so I think maybe the illustration has something to do with family. That could be that showing maybe togetherness would be another thought that the author is trying to support or show their attitude toward, that they must think that families are good or um, being together is a good thing. So I think if the author feels that way, that's why this picture is here. That could be part of what's going on here. Because like you said, that it looks like maybe she's sad and they're trying to uh, lift her spirits. 
And what about this one? Obviously the picture is kind of stopped up here, but you should still be able to get the general idea of what's going on here. What do you think about this one? Marcos? Yeah, it's real wood, but can you turn this? It looks like it's trying to come through. Okay, so comforting. It seems like there's something going on there. Lila? Being gentle, maybe. Zoe? She looks like she might be stressed out or sad or concerned about something. It does kind of give that, uh, that feeling off, right? Um, maybe here the author is trying to show us that uh, that it's a good thing to look out for others, that maybe it's a good thing to support or comfort other people, you know, that that's something that they see as a good thing to do. Because remember, tone is the author's attitude about a particular subject or audience, group of people. You have attitudes toward people as well or toward certain topics. If I say something, I might get a certain reaction from you. And that would be your tone or your attitude toward that particular topic. Okay, Wesley? Um, for the uh, illustration, I'm also getting um, some hope. Okay, maybe there's, she's offering hope to this other person because they're upset about something. That's a possibility. So what do you think the tone is in Destiny's Gift and how do the illustrations help you come to that conclusion? So what do you think is the overall, you could say, tone here? What is it that the author has an attitude toward or an opinion about or a feeling of for a particular subject or group of people? Zoe? Okay, togetherness. Maybe this author values people being together and that's important to them. So you can see it through the picture. That could possibly be it. Amelia? Looking at the title and the picture, I think it's a little, I guess about generosity and kindness and sort of just the general feeling of giving. Okay, giving maybe. Yep, Marcos? So I think the, so, the illustrator really, really likes the idea of having family and like your family a lot. So they, in this book, they tied that how that it was kind of a way of showing their love for their family through this book. Yeah, that's a good thought. Maybe this illustrator or the author really values their family and they therefore are showing it. There. They have that tone, that attitude toward that idea of family that they think is important. And believe it or not, not everybody thinks family is an important thing. That's not a universal idea. There are people out there that family isn't that important to them. So having that attitude or that opinion isn't something that everybody has. So pointing that out and saying, yeah, this person must value their family and being together, having friendships, close friendships, relationships with others, that must be important to them because we're seeing it in the pictures as we go along. So here we have concern, compassion. And you can see that, right? You guys talked about comforting, um, showing help or togetherness, all of that. All of that really ties into these two things, concern and compassion. And you can see it through characters comforting each other. You can see it through main characters looking worried or concerned. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at Martin and Mahalia again. And let's look at some of the illustration going on here. And try to come up with what you think might be the tone. So as you look at these pages, think about the author's attitude or feelings toward Martin and Mahalia. Zoe. So we're talking about we're talking about Martin and we talked about color yesterday or not yesterday Friday and we said that as Zoe said Martin colors are typically cool colors and then the dove is always having the opposite color it seems like or whatever it is that we're covering so here 
We have warm colors for the dove. Barty had cool colors. Marcos. So without this wall, so it says that that Martin built the basketball page, the basketball shop for the basketball and cottage. Yeah. And so the picture is how the illustrated picture is how it shows Martin like like teaching people about the basketball and the word of God and yeah, very good job. Remember how yeah, Friday I said how the text also has that artistic flair in it. It's not just the illustration, and Marcos pointed that out. You can see these big colored words, spoke, prayed, thought, taught, and those are the gospel. You can hardly, it's hard to see it, but it's the gospel afterward. So you can see that those are some of the big actions, right? So this must be important for the author or the illustrator because they're in such big, bold words, right? This must be an attitude or feeling that um, the author is trying to get at here. So yes, very good pointing that out. And it says that Martin taught, Martin, through Martin, they have found the gospel. Yeah, through him and what he's doing, everybody else is able to find it. Okay, Wesley? Yeah, so maybe maybe that's part of the tell, right? Inspiration. That um, somebody being inspired to make such a big impact on other people's lives, right? And cause change. So maybe that has something to do with it. Or maybe the power of the voice, right? The power of um, sharing with others. Maybe that is part of the tell. Martin Luther King Jr. was supposed to be the All right, let's go on to the next one. So this is Mahalia. And as you look at these pages, think about the author's attitude or feelings toward Martin and Mahalia. So, what do we notice here? Like, what do we notice? Yeah, so if we think about color from Friday, he's got the warm colors. So you can see Martin's got cool, so he's got warm. The dove is the opposite of whatever is going on on the page. Zoe? Yeah, it's saying word led and spread. So this is kind of like what she was doing with the gospel. She was uh, more of a singer. So Martin was a preacher. She was a singer. Emmett, what do you notice? I noticed that on that side it shows pictures of her trying to do and that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, so it shows pictures of her acting out what's going on over here feelings or attitudes feelings or attitudes what do you think marcos and then we're going to move on to the next page so is uh, <coughs> that feelings and stuff is supposed to feel like nice and uplifting from how the pictures look and just and just good Okay, so yeah, maybe the author thinks that Mahalia was a very nice, comforting person to all these other people through her singing. Maybe that's their attitude or feeling about her, right? All right, and then as you look at these pages, think about the author's attitude and feeling. So this is done together now. And I believe this was, this part of the story is supposed to be when Martin is speaking to an audience at Washington DC and he gives his I have this I have a dream speech. So I believe that is where this part of the story comes in. So that's why they're both together in this particular moment. Wesley? I know it comes about the dove this time. Yeah. What do you know? This time the dove is actually a snake. So it's uh, it's kinda more of Mahalia's colors than Martin's colors. Yeah, so because they're both there, we're getting a mix of colors. Yep, because remember, she's warm, he's cool. And so now they're both there together, and you can see that mix going on. All right. What else, Zoe? Yeah, 
And what do you think about this cool word? And then we have red colored words. Hmm. So we know this is probably Mahalia speaking because it says Martin, and Martin probably wouldn't refer to himself if he was speaking, right? Nobody really refers to themselves usually, unless you're encouraging yourself, I guess. But so this is probably Mahalia. So what do we think about this up there, Emmett? It's Martin speaking. It's probably Martin speaking, right? So we could even see that when Martin's talking, it's probably blue, and then Mahalia is probably yep, red. Mahalia. Yep. Okay, anything else about attitude or feelings in this illustration, Barthos? So, I think Mahalia is, her characteristic is supposed to be more like welcoming and comforting, and Martin is supposed to be more encouraging and inspirational. Okay, yeah, so maybe that could be the case. She's more of a comforter and he's more of an inspirer. That could definitely be the case. They both are using the power of what, though? What do you notice? They're both using the power of what? The power of their what? London? Their voices, yeah, because Martin is a famous speaker and a preacher, and preachers have to talk in order to really you know, do their job. And then she's a fam more of a famous singer, and singers obviously speak as well. So they're using the power of their voice to get their message across. So what do you think the tone is then, before I show you what the book <laughs> believes the tone is? So what do you think the tone is? We've kind of danced around it, you guys have talked about it a little bit. So what do you think, Lila? Courage. courage? Yeah, it could be courage, right? Because it's during the civil rights era, so if you think about the context, there was a lot of pressure against them. So courage could be part of what's going on here. Emmett? Being able to talk out loud. Okay, being able to speak, speak with power maybe, so something like that. Inspire, that could be something. Zoe? Truth? Yeah, speaking the truth. Marcos? It's, um, it's supposed to uh, be like happy and kind of encouraging and stuff to speak up for yourself. Okay, happy and encouraging to speak up for yourself. Like you'll feel better, is that what you mean? Like yeah. You'll feel better if you do stand up for yourself. Yeah, that could possibly be it too. So here they use celebratory, awestruck, optimistic. Optimistic is like encouraging, right? And then awestruck to be amazed and then celebrating something. And so celebratory, they use powerful words in the illustrations. So Marcos pointed that out with the color, right, in the text. So powerful words in the illustration, awestruck, Ripples moving outward in circles from Martin and Mahalia, and then optimistic bright colors is where they're getting that idea from. So you guys, I think you guys did a pretty good job. You didn't use exactly their words, but you used words that were fairly similar to what they used for poems. All right, so when you read today, notice how the illustrations show the author's feelings or attitudes toward a subject or audience and then write down what you notice in your mini lesson response. So every author uses color. You just gotta look for it. Every author is writing with a certain kind of feeling or opinion that they have. Tone is harder to find than mood, right? Because we covered mood already. Mood is very easy, right? It's just kind of like in the moment, what do you feel? Do you feel scared? Do you feel like mysterious? Do you feel nervous? Do you feel happy? Do you feel angry? Mood is very easy. Tone is harder to discover because it is an opinion, it is a, it is a viewpoint. Okay, so you have to look a little bit harder when it comes to that, okay? So as you're reading today, whatever text you choose, see if you could find the tone that the author is using as they're, as they're sharing their story with you as you read, okay? All right, and then you have your task list up there to go through as well. So you guys can go ahead and start 